Another one of my stories is called Witnesses to Glory. And it's the story of Jesus translated into modern times. And each chapter is a witness by somebody who saw what happened. But it's all in the present day. The Roman soldiers carry submachine guns. And actually, Herod, uh, when I wrote this, was a woman. I'll leave you to guess what her name was. Anyway, this is the prologue. Uh, people talking about how the story came to be written as it, do as it does appear in the Gospels. Gunboats smashing through the door, hobnails crashing down the street at dead of night, distant gunfire, screams close by as people are dragged from their bones at break of dawn and flung into the backs of four-wheel drives. We hid from the death squads. We dare not show a light for fear they see it and capture us to kill us as they killed him that Friday morning, only yesterday. But it seems like an age of terror and torture. If they stop and question us, we must deny everything, even him. It is like a sour taste in the mouth, like vomit, this denial. But we are only human. We want to live. We tell ourselves our denial is to survive, so we may pass on his message. But we lie when we say it. For we tell no one, not even our friends, since all will betray us to save themselves as we would ourselves. No one can judge another when the beatings and electric shocks start. Yet the need to pass it on is so great, we must confess it to each other. So we sit in these cellars in the dark, whispering to the night, holding off the dark, as the troop carriers roar down the streets above us, the gun butts smash the doors, the death rattle of submachine guns fills the night as our comrades die. The ones who are not taken alive are the lucky ones. What we whisper to each other are our memories, a liturgy of hope, how it was, how it will always be in our recollection, how it is to come. Each of, one, each of us has a part of it, and we share it with each other as he taught us to share his blood and his body, cowering here in the dark, and it is like a glimmer of a candle in the hurricane, flickering, faltering, but rising up again. Our stories do not all agree. One will say, this is how it happened, but others will deny it. Out of such disagreements grows consensus. Perhaps it is an outside force at work. The counsellor he promised would come after he left us, guiding us through these frantic, frightened whispers in the long silences between the horrors of the street above. Our numbers are not constant. They are picking us up all the time. And of course, death is still part of the world in these last times. None of us is immune. So these whispered memories become all we have of those who are gone, those who disappear, those who stop sheltering with us. Nothing can be written down. It's too dangerous. But though we are mostly literate, we have been using our memories all our lives. It was part of our daily worship before the clampdown. There are scrolls in the temple, but we do not need them to quote you chapter and verse. We can hear them in our ears, recalling them as they were read at each weekly Sabbath. And so we can also hear the words he spoke and what others have told us of what he said, replaying it to each other so they become not the memories of one, but the memory of all. One day, of course, perhaps a lifetime hence, they will be written so that the whole world may read in all the million tongues of humankind. Something will be lost then as well as gained. Until then, we tell the old stories, pray the old prayers, yes, and sing new songs growing out of the old words, witnesses to what has been, what is, and what is to be. The story of a child who came to lead us and is with us still. Goodbye, everybody.